Okay, perfect. So welcome everyone. My name is Ariane. So I'm one of the Ringing Cedars North American community builders. I'm also a Ringing Cedars ambassador, primarily focusing on Vancouver Island with my partner, Stefan, who you're going to be seeing in a second. Saw his hand there. <laughs> um, so the Ringing Cedars has had like a really exceptional, really, really exceptional year for events. Oh my God. Uh, and we have incredible momentum as well. We've recorded a lot of events very similar to what we're going to be discussing here today along the themes of uh, self-governance and sovereignty. We have a whole slew of these events recorded on the Ringing Cedars North American YouTube channel. So Stefan is going to uh, post that link in just a sec uh, in the chat. You can go ahead and check that out. Uh, really, really interesting events. Um, I, uh, we have this event in particular is really, really important because we had an event, I think, I don't know, maybe three weeks ago where we were primarily focusing on, um, the U S and the theme of sovereignty and self-governance. And we had a very big response from the Canadians wanting to have information, um, about the land that we occupy here. And lo and behold, uh, Rob was in the Canadian Telegram chat, and his information was just absolutely riveting. And the word truly is riveting. Like, I keep on saying that when I describe Rob <laughs> to people and his work. Um, so he um, he was in the, the Canadian Telegram, Ringing Cedars chat. Um, I had a very strong calling to connect with him, to ask him to be a guest speaker. And we have the honor today of speaking with him. Um, I'm going to give you this most incredible uh, intro, Rob, uh, Rob from the Paji family. So for over 20 years, Rob has been on a journey to explore healthy relationships in all aspects of life. In 2005, he started questioning his relationship with the state, which opened up a world of violence, lies, and deceit, which violates the premise of healthy relationships and boundaries. In 2008, he took a leap of faith and ended his relationship with the state. He declared sovereignty and started exploring how to free people and the land from feudalism, dependency, and slavery. In 2011, he was featured in the hit YouTube documentary, Ungrip, and a few years later, he authored his first book, Graduating Life with Honors. He has lived off the grid since 2007 building earthships, greenhouses, and exploring what it takes to be independent, free, and sovereign. He is now stewarding sovereign land located in Northern Ontario with the assistance of his tribe while running his school for the Passim Arts. So it's the uh, art of peace. So um, Stefan is going to go ahead and share those links right now to uh, Rob's uh, book his free book that he has so generously offered. <laughs> this is absolutely incredible book, Graduating Life with Honors. Um, the documentary, YouTube documentary, Ungrip, that's also going to be going up in the chat, as well as Rob's website. So we're going to go ahead and post that. Thank you so much, Stefan, for doing that. Um, Rob, um, I can't express how grateful <laughs> we are for having you here for offering um, to, um, for saying yes to the, um, the suggestion of coming up here and speaking to the community. Uh, the community is very, very excited to be hearing you speak. So um, please go ahead and share your journey with us. And um, thank you again on behalf of the Ringing Cedars community for speaking here today. Thank you. I it's an honor to to be here and to share my story and um, appreciate the uh, privilege of speaking to all of you today. Um, I'm still going through the flu right now, so I'm not feeling well tonight, but I'm going to do my best to share what I can. And um, Usually in my talks, I usually start with my recovery from depression and suicide attempts and addictions and uh, the dark chapters of my life. And 
Um, and I talk a lot about that in my book. And um, I'm going to assume that people haven't read my book or seen Ungrip or don't know anything about me. So um, I'm going to jump in here, Rob. I'm going to jump in here. Sorry to uh, to interrupt. If there's any way to pitch your volume a little bit louder, we have some comments coming in that the uh, volume is a little low. If there's any way to increase it, uh, go ahead. My apologies for that interruption there. That's okay. I'll just speak closer to the mic. Is that better? It sounds better on my end. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, <clears throat> So with that recovery, um, I learned how to start loving myself and learn how to connect with my feelings and how to communicate my feelings and set boundaries, healthy boundaries and that sort of thing. And it changed my life. And it also provided me with a foundation for evaluating relationships. And in 2005, um, my wife at the time uh, introduced me to uh, these concepts that some people were sharing and I started exploring my relationship with the state and I got really angry and um, scared and pissed off because I found out that the state wasn't actually there to look after me and protect me as I thought it was. There's a bunch of deceptions going on. And so I started exploring and realizing that um, the only reason that it went on was because I allowed it and I participated in it. And so I actually started seeing that as being my responsibility, not anybody else's. And at that point, I decided that I would start to take responsibility for my life in ways that I never contemplated before. And at that point, that's when we started looking at moving off grid and growing our own food and providing our own shelter and generating our own energy and that sort of thing so that I wasn't dependent on the state or the corporations for the necessities of life. And at that point, I was also reading Anastasia and started learning from her. And, and so we established our, the Page family domain. You know, it was our little space of land uh, north of Edmonton that allowed us to reconnect with Mother Earth and to start re reconciling our relationships with, with our mother. Because I, acknowledge that you know if if i was dependent on the, the state and the corporations then if i'm going to remedy that you know where where are my needs met and they're met by our mother which meant that i had to start acknowledging that relationship and reconnecting with her and learning her language and and connecting with her spirit and at that point, I um, started really resonating with the teachings of the Nehuen in Treaty 6. Um, that's their word for it. Um, most people know them as Cree, but Cree is actually a French word. Um, so I, I want to honor them by using their language. So the Nehuen um, people uh, started teaching me about some of their old teachings and I started resonating with a lot of it. And, um, and you know, I, I have many friends who are Indigenous and I actually want to acknowledge one that's here tonight, uh, Becky Big Canoe. She's a clan grandmother here um, on this land. And so I want to take an opportunity to, to do a land acknowledgement, but this won't be something that most people would see because um, this isn't me acknowledging the land of her ancestors and then continuing on with my colonial ways. This is me acknowledging 
the land of her ancestors and my efforts to decolonize and to stand in honor of the original treaties that my ancestors and her ancestors signed when the white tribes came from Europe to Turtle Island. And so I want to acknowledge that past and the genocide that happened and my efforts to bring this to awareness and to reconcile that relationship and um, reconciliation isn't about acknowledging things but about um, making changes and ending the violence and the abuse and the behaviors that uh, resulted in in harm to those relationships and so I work really hard to walk that path and um, and so to me that's the proper reconciliation so that I can then try to restore the white tribes back into proper standing so that when the lodges get restored of the red tribes here on Turtle Island when I receive an invitation, I can stand in the lodge in proper standing because I've done the work to do the decolonization and to stand as a peaceful member of a white tribe in a red tribe lodge. And so I want to acknowledge Becky Big Canoe and, and uh, all the others that I've connected with and and learn from over the years um, because part of their message is for us, what I've heard anyway, is for us to, to end our colonial ways and return to the land and to end the violence. And, and this is more than, um, you know, being peaceful, but acting peaceful and and um, changing the way we interact with one another. And I've been acknowledged by the Nehuen in Treaty 6 through ceremony. And I've been acknowledged because of the work that I've been doing. And about six years ago, I was invited to ceremony. And at that point, um, they surprised me by gifting me this white eagle feather and the spirit name white walking feather. And receiving a, a white eagle feather is one of the highest honors <clears throat> that we can receive from, from their nations. And so I, I take this as a great honor an acknowledgement of the efforts and the work that I've been doing to, to decolonize and, and walk a path of peace because the original treaties weren't there for us to take over and rape and pillage the land, but for us to canoe down the same river and not interfere with one another. And so for me to, to decolonize I need to learn the ways of the land and connect with the land. And to me, that's what Anastasia was talking about. And when I was in a, a meeting a number of years ago, we were planning a indigenous conference in Calgary. One of the elders started speaking and she spoke of how her ancestors taught her how to soak seeds in her mouth and how to go through a ceremony for planting seeds. And I was like, just blown away because it's like, that's what Anastasia talks about. And it's like, this isn't new knowledge. This is knowledge like all over the world because Anastasia is in Russia. We're here in Northern Alberta. So it was just a validation of what I was learning through Anastasia's books. And uh, I was amazed to, to hear her speak of this. And so, so I worked hard and the elder in the ceremony when he gave me this white eagle feather and the spirit name white walking feather, he said something to me that 
kind of like it was an angelic two by four on the side of the head. Um, he said, Rob, you are the land. And when I stopped to reflect on that one statement, I had to realize um, that my body, my vessel came from the land, it's nourished by the land, protected and clothed by the land. And when my vessel dies, it's a quad driving by, um, it will return to the land and my spirit will continue. And so in my book, I ask a really important question. Am I a physical being having a, fit, a spiritual experience or am I a spiritual being having a physical experience? And for me, I had to answer that I'm spiritual and I'm here on a special life purpose expressed through this physical vessel. And I'm here in this form for a short period of time. And so I'm going to do the best I can to fulfill my life purpose. And that life purpose was a manifestation of all the challenges that I had in my life. And that is to help teach people how to have healthy relationships with self, with each other, but also with spirit and mother earth. And to go through that reconciliation process. So part of what I've done is, you know, I, I said, okay, if I'm going to do this, then I think I need some ground rules. And one of the things was, is that I believe that what I'm doing has to be simple. It can't be complex. So because I don't believe creator sent us here so that only a small percentage of people can can do this so it had to be simple and it had to be loving and peaceful and so at that point i decided i'm going to declare peace I, I don't want to be at war anymore and um and that helped me make decisions and they weren't easy decisions but it helped me to kind of sift through a lot of the stuff that, that's been shared over the years and so i'm i'm gonna cover a little bit of stuff from my book but i i want to cover stuff that's not in my book tonight because a lot's happened since my book was written and a lot's happened even since ungrip came out <clears throat> the state is run using feudal principles and I know we've been taught that feudalism ended hundreds of years ago, but um, we're still in a feudal system. And there's a book called uh, A Treatise on Copyhold. It was published in 1815, I believe. It's a free book you can get off of Google that describes feudalism. Um, you can also go through Blackstone's commentaries uh, that was published in the late 1700s. <clears throat> and um, when when the crown came here, um, they used fictional constructs, uh, corporations, and fictional ideas that most people didn't comprehend at the time because it was completely foreign. Um, and um, I speak much about in my book, um, the, the fictional realm versus the physical realm and the spiritual realm. And acknowledging that this fictional realm of corporations, which are dead bodies, and us willfully wrapping these dead bodies around ourselves to animate them, uh, those are called corporation souls, S-O-L-E, not S-O-U-L single single corporation single body um and we're literally animating these dead bodies to interact with one another and so i kind of chuckled when uh arianne mentioned persons because that's kind of a red flag for me i kind of get twitches because to me that's 
that's fiction. I don't see persons here. I see beautiful spiritual beings. <clears throat> and, um, and when I started realizing this, I, I realized that a lot of the remedies that people were researching within the system weren't resonating with me because they were complex and they were within the fictional realm. And so what I wanted to do was take a very different approach. And so I started exploring what it would take to step into the authority and jurisdiction of spirit and express that in my life rather than fiction. Um, so for example, a lot of indigenous groups in Canada take the crown to court for land claims and all that kind of stuff. And what they don't realize is that when they do that, they're, they're approaching it as feudal serfs, slaves, citizens, rather than sovereign spiritual beings. And so when they do that, they have no authority. They have, what they're essentially doing is asking their Lord and master for permission to resolve a dispute for them. <clears throat> which is an act of war. And so anything that involves the court, because the courts all have a um, monopoly on coercion um, and they all belong to the crown anyway, um, they're all part of that fictional construct uh, and that war machine. And so I thought, well, how am I gonna resolve things without courts. And um, that's when I started turning to scripture and, you know, not sure where everyone is in regards to scripture, but the system is designed and built on scripture. And so whether you believe it or not, it's potent to learn some of it because the system uses scripture. And so I found a passage, Matthew 5, 25, agree with thine adversary quickly, whilst thou art in the way with him, lest at any time the adversary deliver thee to the judge, and the judge deliver thee to the officer, and thou be cast into prison. And so I found some people that were teaching how to actually apply this. And one, one of the things that I realized is that the system also has a principle where the one making the claim has the burden of proof. And so the system makes many claims. And so what I started doing years ago was agreeing with them. And it may seem odd, but I, it was the way I wanted to try this out. And so I agreed with them on the condition that they prove their claim. And, and then I provided the burden of proof that I required. And because I've been researching the system for years, um, you know, my background is in IT. So I, I actually learned how to program computers. And when I started reading statutes and regulations, I realized that they're designed just like computer programs. So I can read statutes and regulations very easily. It's natural to me, but um, confusing to a lot of other people. But um, what I did though, is I realized that they don't act within the boundaries of their mandates. And so I catch them all the time breaking statutes and regulations and but I also catch them breaking spiritual law, the law of love, the law of compassion and empathy and peace and freedom. And um, they, they violated treaties um, that they made with the nations here on Turtle Island. Um, they used fork tongue language and coercion and manipulation and genocide and, uh, all kinds of atrocities that violate spirit and and violate the integrity of the crown that they're supposed to be upholding. And so I confront them on all this by getting them to prove that they can actually act in these ways 
which puts them in a position because they can't prove it. Um, I catch them in their lie. I catch them in their deceit by making them prove that they can actually behave in this way and they can't prove it. And I, this is an approach I've taken for years. And because I agree with them, there's no dispute. There's no dispute, there's no reason to go to court. Um, and that's the other principle I wanted to walk this path on is I wanted to do this without courts and that sort of thing. And, and you know, I've, I'm sitting here today uh, and I can truthfully say I've never been arrested or thrown in jail despite all the work that I do. So in 2008, I declared my sovereignty and ended my relationship with the Crown. And I sent back all the documents that I had in my possession because they're not actually mine. Um, they actually are property of the state. And so I sent them all back. I, I'm not in possession of a birth certificate or a driver's license or a passport or social insurance number or any of that kind of stuff. Um, I don't have bank accounts. I don't have um, accounts with the power grid or gas companies or any of that kind of stuff. Um, part of me taking responsibility for my life was to provide everything for myself and my family. Um, and then a few years ago, um, now let me talk about Doctrine of Discovery first. Um, Doctrine of Discovery is a series of papal bulls passed by the Pope in the 14 and 1500s. And there's three of them specifically um, that make up the doctrine of discovery. And papal bulls are just like statutes and regulations, except for they apply to the Pope's serfs, which are the kings and queens of Europe, some of them. And that gave them permission, them being the, the royal families of Europe, to go and conquer the land of the world because the one papal bull is the Pope claiming all land. The second one is the Pope claiming all people and all their bodies. And the third was claiming all the lost souls of the Holy See. <clears throat> and that was the royal family's justifications for coming to Turtle Island and if the indigenous people here weren't followers of Christ, then they were deemed to be animals. And that means the land was not occupied and they can then just come and take it. And now as a foundation for hundreds of years of genocide and violence. And I know a lot of my red tribe brothers and sisters are petitioning the Pope to rescind the doctrine of discovery and the crown and all that kind of stuff. And to me, that's, it's not gonna happen. And to me, it's not the right approach. Um, what I've found is the, the solution is actually a paradox. And I use the doctrine of discovery as a roadmap. And so I took a look at those three and the first one or the, the, the third one, the one where uh, the Pope claims all the lost souls. I realized that if I don't know who I am, I'm lost and he has a claim over me. However, if I do my work and I do my healing and I discover who I actually am, that I am a spiritual being and that I'm not a person, I'm not a feudal serf, 
I'm not a driver, I'm not a taxpayer, I'm not a owner, any of that kind of stuff, am I lost anymore? No. And at that point, his claim disappears. So it's not something that he has to do to free me. This is something that I had to do to free myself. And that empowers me. I don't have to wait for somebody else. So I can free myself. And so that freedom came by me going through the healing and realizing that I'm a spiritual being and finding the courage to stand up and stand in that spiritual jurisdiction and build my own independence and walk my life and path in that way. And I, I speak to that at great length in my book. At that point, I now have the standing to then claim my body back. And that's what I did in 2008 when I declared my sovereignty. And by me moving off grid and taking responsibility for providing all the necessities of life for myself. I had to do it that way because to me, claiming sovereignty and but yet still working a job and going to the grocery store and all that kind of stuff, that that's contradictory. And so I worked hard to build my independence so that I can actually stand on that declaration. But that also meant that I had to not go to war against anybody. And again, that's important that I go through the emotional healing so that I don't go to war with people because um, war isn't just bullets and spears. It's also the words that I used, uh, the actions or inactions in my life. And that required fundamental emotional healing in order for me to be peaceful and loving in my relationships and in my words. It was 2008. Um, the land, that's been an, a huge challenge. And um, so for the last 15 years, we tried tribe building, setting up communities. Um, we've had people out on the land with us, building airships and shelters and that sort of thing. Um, and it was one struggle after another. And I can safely testify that it was a struggle because um, people brought their colonial ways uh, to the land. Uh, some of them were weekend warriors. They just wanted to rip up and down the forest paths with their motorbikes and skidoos. And um, none of them wanted to go into sacred heart circles uh, to work on relationships and work through feelings and healing to integrate the shadows. Um, and none of them were willing to work on their relationship with the land. And um, it is a brutally challenging journey to find people willing to, to do that work. And I've found that the core of relationships is emotional intimacy. And you know, that was something that I didn't have for the first 33 years of my life. That's something I had to learn going through my recovery. And now I can testify that emotional intimacy is the core of relationship and is the core of my relationship with myself, with the creator, with mother earth, but also with tribe. And if people around me aren't willing to sit in circle in a healthy way and work through the painful shadows and the traumas, um, then those shadows and traumas are going to sabotage the tribe. And I have 15 years of experience with that. 
um, I'm now in Ontario uh, by an invitation of a dear friend of mine. And I've known her for almost 10 years and um, we both are working towards the same goal of returning to the land and building tribe and holding ceremony and uh, sacred heart circles so that we can navigate it. And I'm absolutely grateful that it's working. And, um, you know, we've had our rough patches and that kind of stuff, but it's working. And that that's an important acknowledgement because the land ceremony that I just fulfilled was supported on a foundation of that tribe. And so in the last few months, I, um, I actually started this ceremony in Alberta, but I didn't have the tribe there to support me. So I abandoned it. But when I got here, I located about 78 acres of land, um, crown land, and I challenged the crown on claim and I conditionally accepted their claim <clears throat> and um, I'm not going to go through those letters because it would take days to deconstruct it and explain how everything works but suffice to say that um, the burden on them was pretty high because uh, of the way they handled treaties back then and the genocide and residential schools and all that violent and violence and abuse. And when I write, I don't deal with the bureaucrats because I'm sovereign. I deal with the Queen's representative directly. So I talk to the Lieutenant Governor and the Governor General and the Queen and the Pope directly. Um, I don't talk to prime ministers and premiers and ministers and all that kind of stuff because that's not my place to talk to them. Uh, I see myself as being on a level of um, the same level as what the queen is or the pope, although very different standing. <laughs> um, and I gave them 10 days to respond and they didn't respond. So I then sent them a notice of default and gave them another opportunity. Um, and if they didn't respond, then they would agree to a whole bunch of facts and they didn't respond. Now the third round, most people would be sending like a, a notice of judgment or something like that, but I decided I'm gonna take a different approach. I actually sent an invitation to ceremony and it was a forgiveness ceremony on the land. And um, the purpose of this was to forgive them and forgive the trespasses and the, the genocide and the violence and all that sort of thing. Um, because I felt it was the a Christ level of consciousness thing to do. And so I invited them onto the land to join me and my tribe in my medicine wheel to go through a ceremony of forgiveness. Because um, one of the things I realized through my journey is that I actually appreciate what the government has done because if it wasn't for their abuse I wouldn't have woken up to the truth of who I am and the type of relationship that I had with them for many years of my life I wouldn't have realized that I was a slave and so they actually gave me the greatest gift of waking me up 
so that I can realize what it actually takes to be independent and sovereign. And um, and we held two ceremonies, um, a full full moon ceremony to shed away the old and a new moon ceremony to bring in the new. Um, they didn't show up for the, the first ceremony. So in that ceremony, the divine feminine that was in the ceremony communicated with the land and the land spoke to them and spoke a name. Um, her name is Silent Dancer. And I was given a message to speak for her because she doesn't have a voice that they hear or understand. And so I wrote a letter to the Lieutenant Governor um, speaking for Silent Dancer and expressing that she too wanted to be sovereign and a, a few other things, but essentially I gave her a voice that they could hear if they are open to hear it. And two weeks later, we did the new moon ceremony. And the very next day I received a letter from the Lieutenant Governor. And I'm not sure if everybody's seen the letter, but I'm going to share this letter here. Um, can you enable me to screen share, please? Over the years, I've written hundreds and hundreds of letters. And this is the very first time I've actually received a letter from Lieutenant Governor. And the letter is very simple. It says, Dear Sir, I'm writing on behalf of the Honorable Elizabeth Dowdswell, Lieutenant Governor of Ontario, in response to your Declaration of Sovereignty letter. Her honor acknowledges the receipt of your message and thanks you for its delivery. This comes with her honor's best wishes. <clears throat> now to, to many people, that may not seem like much, but for me, this is speaking volumes because one sovereign can't dictate or pass judgment over another. All she can really do is acknowledge and send her best wishes. And the Declaration of Sovereignty letter was me speaking for the land. And that was done through sacred ceremony. And that was done through ceremony heavily influenced by the Nahuan people of Treaty 6, by the teachings that I received from them. And through my approach for being peaceful and for not declaring war because the system is the war machine. And if I declare war, then I end up in their battlefield. And so I have to be very careful that I don't go to war. And so I have to maintain peace at all times. And she acknowledged that. And in 17 years, me receiving that letter not that I needed that as an acknowledgement because I knew in my heart and I knew from spirit that I was doing the right thing. And I'm building a shelter on what is now sovereign land. Um, my garden there is two years running now and my medicine wheel is built there. a lot of emotion came out because this has been a very hard, long, lonely journey. I've lost a lot. I've lost family, I've lost friends. My brother and my sister, they're both police officers and my brother's wife is a police officer. I got two uncles that are police officers. Some of them are under orders not even to talk to me anymore. And 
and the way I see the world is very different than the colonial way. And um, it's been a lot of grieving and pain and change and sadness and that all came flooding out when I received that letter. But it resolved the third part of the doctrine discovery. Because in the end, I am the land. I'm as much a part of the land. I'm much a part of Silent Dancer as the trees on that land, as the moose, the bear, the worms, the mice, the water, the wind. In fact, at this very moment, I'm nursing a raven to health. He's living in my house right now. It's just a hole in the ground, but until he heals, he can fly away. But I do it because they're my tribe. All the plants and animals are my tribe. And this is what I believe the Nehuan and the other nations of Turtle Island have been trying to teach us for so long. Because I realized that my ancestors were colonized 1,000 years ago, 2,000 years ago. And in order for me to be in proper standing, I need to decolonize myself and my relationships and change my way of thinking and relating. And this is the way I know how. And I believe that my tribe is now looking after me. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, I, th I think I'll leave that story up to there. And I think, I think we have another half hour yet. So I, you wanna do Q and A now? I'll, I'll make you host again here, so. Thank you, Rob, for sharing that. That was, yeah, that's um, really um, moving. Um, speaks very deeply to me, I know, and likely a lot of us here. Um, I certainly have uh, a lot of questions and I know that there are already questions coming in on the chat. So um, perhaps we can address the ones that have already come in uh, on in the chat box, and then we can get into uh, the hand raising that I had uh, suggested before. So you had mentioned, Rob, uh, sacred healing ceremony circles. You had mentioned this uh, a few times now. Um, and we have a few people, one in New Brunswick, and I believe another one in Alberta that had inquired about that, how, like, how accessible are they? How can people find them? There is definitely a, um, uh, a curiosity about this. Um, I actually hold a circle every Saturday evening uh, from 8 to 10 Eastern on Zoom here. Um, it's been pretty quiet lately, but um, I facilitate, have been facilitating circles for years. And um, I use my experience for my own recovery um, to build a safe container for people to share and work through things and that sort of thing. Um, but I also 
within the decolonization ceremony that Spirit asked me to put together. Um, the idea there is, you know, I would hold a five-day decolonization ceremony to help people um, learn how to do that so they can go to their own tribes and start up their own circles and, and try to duplicate um, what I've been finding has been working for, for us here. Is there any way, uh, are you open to sharing that link or is it specific? Yeah. Yeah, I can share the link. Yeah. Yeah. We have, yeah. uh, we have a recommended, thank you for that offering, by the way, that sounds absolutely incredible. That sounds amazing. And there's already interest in our group as well to, um, to get involved with that. Um, there's another question here, Christopher, um, regarding the birth certificate. I'm just scrolling up here. Just give me one moment. I would like to know what kind of letter. Yes. Um, um, he is a man born in the Canadian province of New Brunswick, looking to claim sovereignty, get out of the legal fiction of the system. Um, claim he's looking to claim his body back uh, and he is inquiring about give me one sec here Christopher I will get your question what kind of letter should I write to get my birth certificate out of the system out of the municipalities and out of the provinces well my view is um, the birth certificate is still a fictional construct and you don't actually need it um, I gave mine away um, so I'm not trying to cl claim it because it's not mine to claim. It's actually belongs to them. It's their property. It's not mine. So I didn't claim it. Um, I actually gave it back to them. That's very different than what most people out there do. But it also limits my interaction because you need a person in order to interact with the system. So there are consequences. And so living life without those persons becomes a little more challenging, but um, I'm navigating it. You know, remember in scripture, it also says, you know, at, at one point, um, the mark of the beast, none will be able to buy or sell without the mark. And these fictional constructs, uh, these persons will soon uh, collapse into a single whether it's a digital ID or whatever it's going to be. Um, the only way to interact with the system is through this token. And uh, I believe we need to figure out a way how to not only survive, but thrive without it. And we're not gonna be able to do it by the system. We have to reestablish a healthy relationship with the land. That's how it's gonna be done. And you don't need birth certificates for that. We have another question coming in here from uh, Lena Del Mar. She's asking, where can we look up the three popes laws? Uh, I speak of them in my book, but um, all the papal bulls are published online. You can do your own research. There's lots of people out there that are posting information about the doctrine of discovery and that sort of thing. So. Yep, if there's any more questions coming in, you can use the chat. You can also raise your hand if any of you would like to ask a question directly, or you can use the chat box. And if not, I have literally a dozen questions. <sighs> yeah. Um, so I'm in the process of reading um, Rob's book, Graduating Life with Honors, and uh, literally within the first 20 pages, Rob, you talk about the fictional world. I just want to read uh, something here that really caught my eye. It's page 13 of the book. And you can uh, download this book for free, right, Rob? PDF, yeah. Yep. Um, it's page 13. You're speaking about the fictional world. You say, we must remember that our imagination is a tool and it can serve or enslave us if we are not consciously aware of how we use this tool. 
We can create amazingly complex systems as a result of this powerful tool. The creator set the rules for how the spiritual and physical realms are governed, but we essentially set the rules for the fictional realm. We can do whatever we want in our own imagination, but what about if we get caught up in others' imaginative stories and their intent is not honorable, but instead has a moral and unethical consequences? You go ahead to talk about this fictional realm. You go ahead to talk about imagination. And uh, I was tying this so much with uh, Anastasia's, um, um, when As Anastasia and the Ringing Cedars talks about the science of imagery, drawing so many parallels. Did you want to just elaborate a little bit on that? Because I think that's incredible. Um, you brushed on it briefly when you were speaking, but I think it would be great to speak a bit more about it. Oh, I could speak for a day on it, but um, in my talks, and I don't remember if I actually said this in the book or not, but um, I asked people, how many cans of Coke did Coca-Cola manufacture last year? And a lot of people, you know, will take guesses like millions or hundreds of millions, but the actual answer is zero because Coca-Cola is a fictional construct. It's just a piece of paper. People build machines that produce cans of Coca-Cola. The corporation doesn't do nothing because it's, it doesn't exist. It's just a piece of paper. And I can say the same thing with the concept of Canada. Canada is just a piece of paper. It's a idea that was sold to us and so people then say they're in Canada. It's like, how can you be in a piece of paper? How can you be in a idea that doesn't exist? You know, I'm on this land. I'm a part of this land, but you know, I'm talk now talking about a fix uh, physical connection and a spiritual connection. But these ideas, if we um, are not careful, can govern and take over our perceptions of how we interact with one another. And people are proud to be Canadian and I'm not Canadian. Uh, I'm not in Canada. I'm not a feudal serf. I'm not a subject of her majesty. I'm not a subject of the crown. I'm not any of that stuff. So, so what am I? I'm a spiritual being. I am that I am and I'm here to explore what that means and what that is. And I'm not gonna limit it to these constructs that other people have created, but that disturbs people. It's very disturbing to start realizing that. <clears throat> and all the constructs that govern society and institutions and all that kind of stuff are exactly that. You know. Show me Canada. Is it, is it the Parliament buildings? No, that's, that's a building. That's not Canada. Is, is it lines on a map? No. That's what we think it is. So for, for me, um, these fictional ideas, they bring up red flags for me. They, they, they trigger my spidey senses kind of thing because um, I've worked for years to be consciously aware of that and to question, you know, is this true? Is this spiritual? And if not, then what's really going on? Yeah. Thank you for elaborating that a bit more. Thank you. Um, we have a few more questions coming in. Michael has asked, many people in our community have discussed the idea of acquiring land together. If we were to do so, could you speak to the process of liberating that land from the crown? Well, let's talk about the process to begin with. When you purchase land, you're not actually purchasing land. You are feudal serfs purchasing a fee simple title, which is a tenure, fee simple tenure to possess land 
the actual ownership of the land remains with the crown uh, through a lordial title. Um, and the service that you owe when you do that, it comes in the form of property taxes. And, um, you know, I, I tell people that Service Canada is, isn't named that because they're providing service to Canadians. Service Canada service is actually a feudal term where the feudal serfs owe service to the Lord of the manor and they set up office to collect the service from the serfs called Service Canada or Service Ontario or whatever it is in your whatever province that you think that you're in. Um, and so when you purchase land, what's actually happening is you're acting as an agent for the person, which is a fictional entity to um, purchase this grant from the crown for you to possess land and you agree to then pay the property taxes. So now that I've gone through this process here with crown land, I don't really see it being that much different for land that's held under fee simple title tenure. Um, you know, I've confronted the state in regards to property taxes. Um, you know, the latest uh, challenge was a few years ago and we were successful then, but it's, it depends on your spirit and it depends on your intent. Um, it depends on the healing that you've gone through and the path that you're walking. If you're doing it to try to get away with something, then you're not getting it and you may run into challenges. But if you know who you are and you've declared peace and you're in proper spiritual standing, then I don't see why it wouldn't um, be successful because spiritual jurisdiction trumps anything fictional. But if people are going into it uh, out of fear or um, not sure what they're doing or any of that kind of stuff, um, or they they don't know who they are and they're going in as a feudal serf and they're doing this, then it's not going to work because a feudal serf is a child asking permission from a parent. And the reality is the feudal serf is ordered to be obedient. If you read the actual letters patent of the governor general, the letters patent actually orders everyone to be obedient and to help the governor general in his or her duties. Um, that's what being a serf is all about. Their idea of peace, because there's two definitions of peace. One is uh, order and the other is tranquility. Their, their function and duty is the definition of order and they can use violence and coercion in order to maintain order. But the definition that I use is tranquility. Um, and so there's, depending on which one you're looking at, uh, well, the outcomes will be different. So when I say peace, I'm talking about tranquility, peace. When they speak about peace, they're talking about order. And so if you're being disobedient or you're not um, following the rules, then they will use their system to keep you in order. And so if we can um, remove ourselves from the system and be peaceful tranquility-wise, then we're not in their jurisdiction, we're not at war, and they have no reason to bother us. And in fact, I would suggest that they actually have a duty to protect us. We have another question over here um, that's come, come in. There's actually a few comments, uh, not so much questions, but comments about how conditioned we've been to even fear our freedom, you know, 
um, mm -hmm. because of the fear indoctrination. So there's quite a few comments um, coming in about that. And I can certainly uh, relate to that. Just watching. <laughs> Just watching Ungrip, I can see um, my own fear <laughs> of potentially walking your own shoes was so strong, you know, and I had to ask myself fear of what, you know, fear of authority. Well, why am I afraid of authority? You know, like it was so deeply entrenched and uh, you have very beautifully um, shown us in this, um, in this meeting, you've really very beautifully and vulnerably showed us the depth of this process. I mean, I, I don't think any of us are going to know until we actually go through the process ourselves, but it really looks like, and sounds like you have um, gone to the depth, right. Of something that has truly been plaguing and continues to plague the collective. And it's like what someone was alluding to in this chat over here, this fear of freedom itself. Right. Yeah. This, for many years, I thought this was an intellectual exercise, but this is very much a, an emotional, well, it, there's some intellect too, but physical and spiritual. So in, in the medicine wheel, like in some of the teachings from many tribes around the world, they have a medicine wheel and the four quadrants represent different aspects of life. And it was actually a Cree, uh, pardon me, uh, a Métis elder, um that taught me that we can view the medicine wheel like a, a plate and if we just focus on one quadrant the plate would be off balance and everything will fall off the plate and so the goal there is to maintain a balance of the physical emotional mental and spiritual <clears throat> i want to share a story of my journey to ontario because a friend of mine actually came out to Alberta and picked me up and it was during the, the, the pandemic um, where Ontario had its borders closed and I didn't know if I'd be able to cross the border because I know just hours before us there was a huge convoy that you know went to try to run the Ontario border and they all got turned back and so I wasn't sure what kind of mood the cops were going to be in and that sort of thing and I was feeling anxiety and that kind of stuff. And then we were about a half an hour away and I realized I'm just gonna surrender and accept whatever outcome may come and just trust spirit. And so I felt the anxiety just go away. And when we approached the check stop, um, police officer, you know, asked, my friend where he was going and so he said he was going home and and the police officer then because it's like 12 30 at night the police officer then started saying well these gas stations are open these ones are closed and you know talked for a few minutes about you know the journey and that sort of thing but not once did the police officer look at me talk to me address me in any way and he then told us good luck and we were on our way and we just looked at one another in shock and we were laughing and you know then i realized i wonder if he even saw me and so part of this is trusting in spirit to uh, protect us and orchestrate our journeys and I, I honestly believe that I am protected because I've surrendered to the creator and the creator is my master and my guide and no one else. Um, it's not easy, um, but to me that was part of this journey and um, spirit challenges me because when I was doing this land ceremony, spirit told me to invoke the archetype of Moses. And I was like, are you crazy? Like, there's no way I can do that. And, you know, I had to sit there for weeks, even feeling worthy enough to even consider the idea. 
Um, but Spirit insisted that I take a similar approach to what Moses took with the Pharaoh to free the people from Egypt, that I take to free the people and the land from the crown. And so that's what I did. Because I realized that the people can't be free unless the land is free. And that's one thing Moses didn't do. He just freed the, the bodies. He didn't free the land. So I had to do something different. And it worked. But to, in order to do that, that's not an intellectual exercise. It's very much a spiritual and requires a lot of emotional healing and physical healing and um, that willingness to take a leap of faith. It's a huge leap of faith. And that's scary. Uh, you know, I've been scared throughout a lot of this, but the comfort is coming because I'm starting to witness uh, how it's unfolding and the day after I started the ceremony here, the bylaw enforcement officers and um, uh, building inspectors came and started scoping out the land of my friend here. And so I challenged them, accepted their claims and asked them to prove their claims and provided them with a burden. And it's been months they've not said anything. and. A few years ago, the same lady friend had Child Protective Services challenging her with her daughter and uh, threatening to take her away. And so we confronted them with the same process and she hasn't heard nothing from them for four or five years. I know this works. Um, I've seen it constantly in my journey. Um, Yeah, this isn't an intellectual exercise. Thank you for sharing that. Wow. Thank you so much for sharing that, Rob. We have a few more questions coming in. Uh, Tamara has uh, written here. Thank you, White, White Walking Feather, for all you have generously shared. Can you please recommend? Can you please recommend resources for learning natural law? and also artificial law to the extent that the information will help us leave the Canadian feudal system, perhaps also where we can find guidance, understanding how scripture, how scriptures explain law. Um, <clears throat> I set up a website called paysomearts.com. Um, in there, if you sign up to be a member don't worry about the, the fees and that kind of stuff. Just get signed up. I'm going to actually be deleting a lot of that stuff off the website. Um, but when you get down to the member side, I have a series of videos uh, called A Journey Towards Truth that teaches you how to deconstruct the system, how to speak the language and that sort of thing. There's... Um, probably a good dozen hours of video there. Um, I also have videos about food sovereignty, water sovereignty, energy sovereignty, shelter sovereignty, uh, waste sovereignty, personal sovereignty. I'm gonna be adding a video about land sovereignty now. Um, but I was also holding decolonization classes. And so I have audio recordings of, there's dozens and dozens and dozens there, uh, hours of, um, classes where we talk about certain subjects and that sort of thing. My book is the first place to start. Uh, you can download it off the website or off. Uh, there's multiple links within the Telegram group. I uh, shared it there as well, too. Um, there's lots. There's also posts in there that have PDFs, books, um, website links, that sort of thing to start educating yourself on how the system works so that you know, like figuring out who you are, um, a big part of that is figuring out what you're not. And that's what a lot of this 
work within the website is to teach you that you know you're not any of this stuff so who are you and that's the biggest question but nobody can answer that only you can answer that i can't answer it nobody else can that's it's up to each individual to figure out who you are and uh, that's in my view why we're here we're here to figure out who we are and how to have healthy relationships and um my second book I'm going to be writing is called Ungrip, A Sacred Transformation. Um, the first book talks about a lot of the, the whys and the whats. Uh, the second book is going to be about the how. How to decolonize, how to do what I've been talking about. Um, but... You know, there's classes, recordings. Um, there's also examples of documents and that sort of thing on my website. So you can learn how to do a conditional acceptance letter and that sort of thing. But I haven't started sharing in detail about the land yet because I still have to figure out what I'm going to do. I kind of see myself uh, teaching groups of Indigenous people so that we can start fixing uh, these problems. But um, I also see myself holding more decolonization ceremonies so that I can help hold space for other members of the white tribe so that we can start our own healing and restore ourselves to proper standing. And, um, and so a lot of those teachings aren't going to be online. It's going to be face-to-face. -face. And now that the land, now that Silent Dancer is... Um, is sovereign, um, I have a place now where I can do that work. Thank you so much for those offerings. Um, uh, I will definitely be posting, so this is gonna be up on your website. That's right, that's right, Rob. What's gonna be up there? The, um, the resources you had initially talked about when you first started they're responding. All, they're all up there already. Perfect. Uh, I have dozens and dozens and dozens of hours of video and audios and yeah. lots of reading to do. There's lots. You can spend hundreds of hours doing your own research. So. Great. This is a perfect place then, everyone, to, uh, to begin to start. If we haven't started already, thank you for sharing that, Rob. I want to honor uh, Ancient Brown Bear. She's had her hand up. So please go ahead. I'm going to unmute you here. You can unmute yourself. Yep, go ahead. Oh, sorry. Can you hear me? Yep. Great. Good evening, everybody. Greetings and sending blessings to all on call today. It's been a, a most informative evening, and I am uh, grateful to have been given the invitation to your call. Um, I am uh, a grandmother. We are the matriarchs who uh, come together in ceremony as do the men, as do all of our tribes all around the world. We are walking in prophecy right now. And this is the time where we need to make a, a, a definite decision for ourselves as to which way we want to travel on this path. And the fork in the road is this. Do we choose materialism or do we choose spirituality? And uh, from my perspective and from my my whole family, uh, the women have always been connected to the land. And so um, there's no choosing for us. It's spirituality. It's always been spirituality. And that's just the way we roll. Mm -hmm. So um, with regards to everything that has been said, and I just want to say um, to Silent Dancer, I am an ancient brown bear child, and it's a pleasure, pleasure to be in your energy bubble. Because when we vibe at a higher vibration together, we are invisible. And so you were invisible in that car. Uh, because we are above and beyond those who are capable of uh, thinking uh, above the, the chaos that some other reality that somebody's wanted to create for us that doesn't belong to us. We can simply drop it right now. Um, I, uh, I've been working uh, with my, my sisters from coast to coast, many different tribes. We are the, the, the Mohawk, we're the Ojibwe, the Dene Sosine, the Cree, um, the Huron-Windat. I have many, many sisters that are coming together now 
to um, initiate the change that is required at this moment in time. Uh, with my, my family relations, everyone is a relation, of course, uh, but my family, my brother is a Mohawk Indian over on Akwesasne, and he's sovereign. He's a sovereign headsman. He's always been sovereign all of his life. The Mohawks never signed any treaties. And so when we speak, he says, what are you, guys, what are you doing in Canada? Why are you doing this? You're free. It, but people like, uh, like Silent Dancer suggested is that we think we belong to something that's actually non-existent. And so when we peel back, we don't need to go back uh, and look up papers or anything. We just need to be real with ourselves and true to ourselves and, and figure out who the heck we all are and what is it that we choose to do in our lives and what's our purpose. And when we figure that out and we come to peace from within, that's world peace right there and we're taking care of ourselves. So um, uh, I, I would like to make an offering this evening and that is my brother and I, uh, my brother's name is Salt, also known as Thomas Square over on Akwesasne. We have already begun uh, the initiating, uh, creating our own country. And it is, it's quite easy because we're already our own country. We're all already Turtle Island. And so uh, we're our own, not, not a country. I'm going to just take that word away. We're the lands of Turtle Island. We are all, all that are on the land are the, the spirits of Turtle Island, as Silent Dancer mentioned. So this is, this is how easy it could be. We could uh, adopt everybody, adopt everybody, and just nobody's Canadian. Everybody sends in all their paperwork, just as uh, Silent Dancer had mentioned. And uh, we relinquish our citizenships just like that. And then I have whatever adoption papers, you know, we're really simple people. We don't, I mean, not simple in the, in the sense that we're, we're not intelligent, we're highly intelligent. As a matter of fact, we're connected to creator all the time. This is why we're so, you know, the, we have a broader spectrum, about a broader picture of what the big, uh, the big picture should be. So um, we've already begun making up uh, licenses, uh, our licenses. And uh, my brother was joking around with me the other day. He said, well, I tried out my new license and I only put my Indian name on it. And I said, perfect. So now I'm going to tell everybody, find who you are, get into some meditation, listen to who you are and find out what your Indian name is. Because at this very moment in time, we're all Indians. We are one. And that's the way that we need to walk together, unified in equality, looking each other in the eye, creating trusting relationships and uh, loving each other and loving on each other and having a good time and dancing and just like fun, fun, fun and more fun. Because that is why we are here as human beings to have the experience and we get to choose. Are we gonna be sad and wallow or are we gonna say, you know what, I have a choice. I'm gonna just step up to bat here and I'm gonna be happy. And I appreciate that everybody has uh, whatever it is that we've all had. We all have kind of a history, but I think it's also our responsibility to say we don't have to relive that history. And if we choose to stand in our strength, and we can at this very moment in time, um, we can be our own, our own people taking care of ourselves. So the way that the uh, matriarchs look at it, and, and by the way, we were a matriarchal society thousands of years ago. But this is not something new that we're creating. Moms are connected to the earth. We're the birth givers. We have it going on from that perspective. And we have beautiful men in our lives who respect us for the gifts that we bring to the table. And we also respect the men for the gifts they bring to the table. It's all equal in the, as it is in the eye of creator. We are all equals in the eye of creator. And so this is how I walk and this is how I talk and this is how we do it. Oh my gosh, that was kind of like a song. This is how we do it. Okay, so I'm a little bit on the crazy side and I like to have a lot of fun. And you know what? It's so easy, peoples. It is so, like, I don't even know if I want to call you peoples anymore. Your, your spirits, your spirits. And uh, let us ride together in the high riding uh, electromagnetic frequency and create our new tapestry the way we want it. And that, that's how, that's how uh, uh, the matriarchs have been planning it. 
And between my sisters and I, we are Deja, the land of new beginnings and peaceful sunrises. And Deja means walking in each and every moment in our unconditional self-love and self-respect. As we example this to our children, our families, and most importantly, to ourselves. And so we can do this through prayer. People are asking, how do we do it? First of all, you need to be kind to yourself. You need to start taking care of yourself and make sure that you love yourself because when you have self-love, that's when you create that peace from inside your own being, then naturally world peace will take place. And this will be a natural rollout. There's no, no fighting needed, no nothing. It's just a quiet, quiet changeover from one, uh, one frequency to another. And it's just a different name. We aren't Canada, we are Deja. And Deja, just so you know, is named after my sister's granddaughter who is old lady eagle woman. And she, uh, her daughter is, uh, sorry, her granddaughter is Deja. And my sister old lady eagle woman's grandmother, Kukum Rose Desjardins was the first and only female chief of the Piapot nation. And so we can do this. We can, we can change it over and it's really just a name change and a different license if you want. Um, the rest of it, you know what? We shouldn't worry too much because we've all done this before. We didn't need a license plate from the, the, the get-go. We figured things out as family. And so we just need to look to each other with the love that we have for each other as, as family and respect each other's decisions for, well, just respect each other in general. So um, I, I will put my contact information, uh, I, will, I will leave it with Ariane, Ariane. and um, I would be uh, pleased if um, a list was taken of names who are interested in this concept, because at this moment, it's a concept that we are making into a reality. Well, my brother is doing a majority of the work, and uh, we're also looking into our international banking license and uh, we'll be confirming that in the very near future. Uh, we've also taken into consideration universal um, income uh, with a biodegradable type of dollar because the economy is fake. So we're just making funny money, essentially in order to get people across the bridge in order to realize that uh, what we truly need is trusting and loving relationships and thereby we will begin the barter system again. So. With that, I yield. Thank you so much for listening and um, sending again all blessings to all those ears that are hearing me this evening. I am most appreciative. Hi, hi, heyoka, deja. Ancient Brown Bear Child, I want to thank you so much for that incredibly beautiful share of yours. Um, I'm deeply moved. We are deeply moved. And absolutely, yes, uh, I will most definitely contribute towards that beautiful suggestion you had just made there. Um, I'm happy to collect names. Um, I believe that's what you suggested. So um, I could even leave my email in the chat. Um, and anybody who would like to be part of this initiative, please do uh, email me. And uh, yes, I would mo I'd be most. Uh, <laughs> that sounds amazing. I'm <laughs> I'm just overjoyed, truly, to be hearing these beautiful shares. This is absolutely incredible. And so my dog is also very excited about it, too. My apologies. Um, thank you so much. Thank you so much for that beautiful share. I'm going to leave my email quickly in the chat. Um, and then we're going to get right away into the race, uh, the other race tents. Um, thank you so much. So we're going to, I see Christopher, you have had your hand raised. So go ahead. Can you unmute yourself? Well, um, thank you for, um, allowing me to speak today. And what I would also like to speak upon of as well is that we also have to be because we all know, should know by now that Canada and any province and territory, they're not countries, they're corporations all owned by the satanic Vatican City. Because this land is called Turtle Island. Now, we all need to gather en masse and we need to start 
removing the feudal system altogether and we need to start creating a new sovereign nation or to restore the land that is no known as Turtle Island because people also need to remember too, the American states, the Mexican states, America, Mexico, and Canada, they're not nations, they're not countries, they're corporations. So that's why, of course, I'd like to extend on behalf, of course, the creator of the uh, new Turtle Island uh, Telegram account, uh, whoever that is. I mean, I'm going to leave the contact information for uh, to reach out to her as well. In fact, I'm also going to give you my personal email in the chat as well. You can reach out to me. Everybody in the group, doesn't matter where you live, in Canada, United States, Mexico. I know they're corporations and not countries, but we extend the invitation to everybody who actually cares to come to the Telegram group known as Turtle Island. Oh. Because right now, it's very vital that we work together on removing the feudal system. So I'm going to also leave the contact information. And of course, uh, the number I'm going to give you is the number to reach us out for Turtle Island as well. Because we all need to... Uh, gather, make contact. Uh, Thank you, Chris. Now we have to um, put an end to the pyramid system. So anyone from across Turtle Island, doesn't matter whether it's a state, province, or territory in these corporations can come because we have to work together and restore this land. So there's the Turtle Island. There's the because we also have Zoom meetings every single night around 7 o'clock Ontario time. So I'm also going to add that Zoom room link as well. Feel free to copy that. That link can be accessed anytime after about 7 p.m. Ontario time. Thank you so much, Christopher, for sharing this information. And we can access you on Telegram as well. That's perfect. Thank you so much. Yeah, it seems like we're definitely building uh, community connections and opening up the doors and the opportunities here. Um, I'm gonna call upon here, Halda. I hope I am pronouncing that name correctly. Halda, you can go ahead and um, ask a, your question. Okay, actually, I would like to make a contribution uh, into the resonant field. And it's a song I wrote called The Living Law, if I may. And I wrote it for a recent workshop at the Alphabetic Gardens called I Am the Living Law, and uh, where Ron Gibson spoke and also Mar Marsha Ann, and she was the main inspiration for the song. I am, I am, I am the living law. Tis true, and so, my dear, are you. My creed is do no harm, give no cause for alarm. And be the living truth of the law of one. I come in peace. How may I be of service to thee? May we join in the spirit of love, sharing it far and wide and so we turn the tide the living law below just as above i am you are we are the living law Thank 
you. Beautiful. Yeah, go ahead. I think someone was sharing there. I think I interrupted someone. That was absolutely beautiful, Hulda, and beautiful lyrics and totally in alignment with everything we just shared there. Thank you so much for sharing that. Absolutely beautiful. So I put a uh, contact info into the chat. Thank you. Please, yes. Thank you for doing that. Thank you. Wonderful, wonderful. Yes. Yeah, so I'm I'm looking at the time. I'd like to honor everyone's time here. Um, white walking feather. Is there anything you would like to contribute to? Any last final words you'd like to contribute to? to the community today. Oh. Um, nothing's coming to me right now. So I, I, I did share the link to my Sacred Heart Circles. Um, I also shared my email address if people want to get a hold of me directly. Um, I just want to express gratitude and appreciation for the honor of spending, not, not spending, um, investing those last two hours with beautiful spiritual beings and for the opportunity to share my journey um i pray it resonates with people and um i i do feel moved that so many people wanted to be here to hear my story and it's been a long long time since i've spoken to a group this large and so i'm more feelings are coming up that I'll have to process over the next few days, but I, I do know gratitude and appreciation are in there. So thank you. It is an absolute honor to have you as part of our community, to have access to your offerings. Um, ancient brown bear child as well. Thank you so much for that beautiful share and also for your offering to reach out to this community. It's not just the ringing cedars community here. There are other sub communities that are coming in as well as, and as you can see all across North America. So I truly mean it when I say thank you so, so much on behalf of all of us here on behalf of this beautiful land. And, um, you have helped us open up some uh, very, how should I say, challenging doors. <laughs> and for that reason, we have utmost gratitude. Thank you so much, White Walking Feather. Thank you so much, everyone uh, who is participating right now on this call, the 55 people on the call. That's a lot of us. And we were up to 75 at one point. This is an, an enormous, uh, this is a fantastic um, first initial gathering. So uh, thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. We now have um, more connections with these beautiful uh, souls. <laughs> I'm going to be careful of my vocabulary, souls. <laughs> and we're going to continue building these connections. And we're going to build the, these connections um, through the resources we have over Telegram, over uh, the newsletters, over um, emails. We're going to continue building um, from afar. So thank you so much, everyone, for being here. Truly, it's um, what a joy. And we are ready. We are ready for, <laughs> for this. We are ready. Yeah. And we're, get, we're doing this together, everyone. We're doing this together. I know it's scary. A part of me is quite intimidated uh, and just flat out quite even terrified. But we are holding hands together. So um, we will all go together. And thank you so much for paving the way, White Walking Feather. Thank you. Thank you.